Hello and welcome to one more tutorial for Win Automation, the best desktop automation tool. In this video, we will go through Win Automation's Process Designer, the development environment where you can create process automations. You will find multiple ways to build a process, depending on your needs. You can access the Process Designer from the console by clicking on the New Process option, by double clicking on an existing process, or selecting a process and clicking the Process Designer button on the ribbon. When creating a new process, you are prompted to give a name to the process and to select how you want to build it, via the Process Designer, the Macro Recorder, or the Web Recorder. For now, let's select the Process Designer option, and we will go through the two types of recorders in a later tutorial. On the left-hand side of the Process Designer window, you can see the Actions pane where all the available actions you can use are listed. All actions are grouped into categories based on the type of activity that they perform. You can either click on the plus sign to expand a group, or use the search bar on the top of the pane to search for a particular action. Once you find the action you wish to use, you can drag and drop it in the workspace pane in the middle of the screen. Once an action is added to the workspace, a window displaying the action's properties appears. Through this Properties window, you can configure the exact input and output settings you want to apply to the action. Actions are executed sequentially, from top to bottom, as shown in the workspace. In this particular process, we have a series of actions in the workspace pane, and you can see that next to the fifth action there is a red breakpoint. This means that when the process runs through the process designer in debugging mode, it will stop on the fifth action unless the user manually clicks the play button once again to proceed with the process execution. Breakpoints can be added to help the developer pause the process execution and review particular variable values or the situation of the machine in the middle of the execution. In this example, you can see that some particular actions are grayed out. Those actions are disabled and they are going to be skipped during the execution. You can right-click on an action to enable or disable it, or double-click on the action to get the Properties window, and select or deselect the This Action is Enabled option. An action that contains an error will be marked with a red sign next to it. By hovering the cursor over the red sign, you can see the description of the error of the configured action. The same error message is also displayed on the Error pane, which you can access by clicking on the Error tab at the bottom of the screen. In the same pane, you will see the errors in the event that there is one during the process execution. On the right of the Workspace pane, you can find the Functions pane, listing all the functions you are currently using in your process automation. A function is a set of actions that you can call to be executed one by one. By default, there is only one function, main, but you can add as many functions as you want. You can use multiple functions to keep your script more organized and break down different aspects of it. Double-clicking a function opens it as a new tab in the Workspace pane. Functions will be further analyzed in a future tutorial. Almost all actions use variables in the input and or output sections of the actions properties. A variable holds data that is required at a later stage of the process. A variable can be used by more than one action. All the variables used in a process are listed on the Variables pane located at the bottom right corner of the Process Designer. Here one can view the variables, their types, as well as the values held by the variables at any given time. To view further details about the variables, you can use the Variables Manager by navigating to the Tools Variables Manager menu. Some actions, aside from variables, also use controls. Controls point to elements of applications that the process will interact with. Like variables, each control can be used by one or more actions to access the corresponding element. These controls can be found in the Control Repository, which you can access by clicking on the Controls Repository at the bottom of the screen. Controls and how they are used will be covered fully in a later tutorial. Similarly, for actions that use images instead of controls, you can select the Images Repository, where all the images are stored. Like the Controls Repository, you can access the Images Repository at the bottom of the Process Designer screen. At the top of the Images Repository pane, you can magnify, sort, capture new, 
as well as remove any unused images. In the top ribbon of the Win Automation Console, you have the option to save, undo redo, rename a variable, cut, copy, or paste parts of your process, as well as to search for a term or keyword in your process. The search option can search for a term in a specific or in all functions of the process. Moreover, from the ribbon section, you have the option to add regions. Regions are a way to group together a number of related actions so that you know what this group of actions performs. The region and end region actions will not be executed, and they make no difference to the logic of your process. They are just there for your reference. Another helpful feature that you are able to use in order to keep your processes organized is the comment. Using a comment, you can state what the next or previous action does, as well as to keep a note for future implementations. You can select from the comment window the comment text background color to help separate your comments. Next, there is the macro recorder and web recorder. With the recorders, Win Automation is able to record your activities on your machine, translating them into actions. Once recording is completed, you then have a fully functioning process that you can play back or even edit in order to enhance it with more manual development. Lastly, with these buttons, you can execute the whole process or the next action, pause, and or stop the whole process. Under Tools, you can find the Process Designer options from where you can set the display options of your designer and set the hotkeys and the running time of the actions while debugging. In case you need to modify the layout of your designer, you may drag and drop the panes according to your taste. The general layout of the process designer is fully configurable. Under the View option in the menu, you can hide or show the different panes, and you can also revert to the default layout in case you have made any changes to it. Thank you for watching.